Hello. I think we should fin finish up the book, The Fenway Foul Up. I left off with Mike knew that Kate was always trying to figure out why something happened the way it did. He was usually just trying to make things happen. The sales lady could be in on it too, said Mike. She was reading a travel magazine when I was there. Hmm, maybe they're planning a big getaway. Let's go check it out. Chapter 8, A Sticky Situation. Mike and Kate ran back to the souvenir stand. A little girl stood at the counter. She was buying the autographed baseball that Mike had looked at earlier. When the girl walked away, Kate asked to see the small Red Sox bat in the case. The sales lady handed it to her. Let me know if you'd like to buy it, honey, the sales lady said. She looked down at her magazine. Kate stood on her tiptoes. She tried to see if anything was hidden behind the counter. While Kate snooped, Mike's eyes were drawn to the large TV hanging from the ceiling. Loopy Lenfield had just struck out three athletic hitters in a row. The first half of the eighth inning was over. Boston would have only two more innings to score some runs. The sales lady looked up at Kate. Kate put the small red bat back onto the counter. Then she noticed the other items clustered around the register, including a jar of Red Sox pencils and pens, some Red Sox toothbrushes, and small bottles of Rawlings liquid pine tar. Kate picked up a bottle of pine tar. What's this? She asked Mike. It's sap from a pine tree. It's sticky. Players rub it on the handle of a bat to make it easier to grip. It keeps the bat from slipping out of your hands when you swing hard. Kate nodded. She put the bottle down and studied the miniature Red Sox bat that was still lying on the counter. Hmm, sticky? It makes the bat sticky? Kate muttered to herself. She seemed lost in thought. In front of them, the sales lady twirled a pencil in her right hand. Uh, thanks for helping me, Kate said to her. I'll come back later if I just, after I decide. The sales lady nodded without even looking up. Kate pulled Mike with her toward the back of the store. Mike, she whispered. Pine tar makes bats sticky. Yeah, he said, still distracted by the TV. And water makes you wet. You've really learned a lot lately, haven't you? Yes, if you want to know, I have, said Kate with a smile. In fact, I just learned something important. I found out where the bat is. Do you want to see it? Mike's jaw dropped. What was Kate talking about? Before he could ask, she took off for the racks on the far wall. Mike hustled to join Kate at the back of the store. She browsed through racks of red and blue Red Sox t-shirts. What are you doing? He said, confused. Are you buying a shirt? What about the bat? No, I'm not buying a shirt, she answered. I want to have an excuse to look in the back of the shop. Kate ducked behind the racks of posters and stood in front of the bin of replica Big D Green Monster bats. Mike looked at the front counter. A noisy group of high school students had come into the shop and were throwing a foam baseball around. The sales lady was trying to get them to stop. Kate sifted through the bats. After a few seconds, she found what she was looking for and pulled out one of the bats. That looks just like the one that Grandpa Kevin gave his grandson, Mike said. No, it doesn't, Kate said. She held out the handle. Here, feel this. Mike touched the handle of the bat. It was sticky. It felt like someone had eaten a sloppy peanut butter and jelly sandwich and left fingerprints all over the bat. Suddenly, the pieces fell into place. Pine tar, he said. It's Big D's bat. Exactly, Kate said. But if it's the real bat, why is it sitting here in this bin in the souvenir shop? Mike asked. It's just like what the Yockeys did with their initials on the scoreboard. Someone hid it in plain sight, said Kate. Why would anyone think it was the real bat? I saw it earlier and I didn't think of it. And who would want to buy a dirty bet when they can have a clean one? It was perfectly safe here. 
The sales lady was ringing up purchases for a few of the high school students. She wasn't paying any attention to Kate and Mike. Kate went on, I'll bet the photographer stole the bat when Wally tripped. He brought it up here to hide it so the security guards wouldn't find it on him if they searched him. Wow, Mike said, we need to let someone know. Should we buy it and turn it in? Kate looked at the price tag and shook her head. We don't have enough money, she said, but I have an idea. Kate took a Red Sox t-shirt and covered the sticky bat with it, making sure that the sales lady wasn't watching. Kate popped open the end of one of the poster tubes and slipped the stolen bat inside. Then she slid the tube under the poster rack. That should keep it safe from the thief. Boy, will he be surprised if he comes back and the bat is gone, she said. Let's go tell Bobby, Mike said. The two raced back through the ballpark. There was a deafening roar as they reached the top of the aisle leading down to Boston's dugout. Almost all the fans were cheering. With one runner on base, the Red Sox batter had just nailed a long shot out to right field. The right fielder missed the ball and then bobbled the throw. That left Red Sox players on second base and on third with no outs. Maybe Boston finally had a chance. As the fans settled down, Mike and Kate scanned the field for Bobby. Mike spotted him crouched near the Red Sox dugout. Big D would be up next. Mike and Kate hurried to the infield wall. Psst, psst, Kate whispered, Bobby. Bobby turned around to see Kate and Mike on the other side of the wall. What's up, he asked. You've got some big news, said Kate. She motioned for him to come closer. Bobby slid over against the wall. He tilted his head back a little so he could listen to Kate as she whispered. He kept his eyes on the game the whole time. Kate told him the entire story about the bat and the souvenir stand and what they thought the photographer had done. Wow, that's amazing, Bobby said. While they were talking, the Boston batter had hit a single down the third baseline and made it to first. Finally, three men on base for the Red Sox and Big D was up. Boston could pull ahead if Big D hit a home run. I'll be right back, Bobby told Kate and Mike. Don't go anywhere. Bobby ran to the dugout and brought out the new bat that Nathan had given Big D earlier. Bobby rubbed a little pine tar on the clean handle and whispered something into Big D's ear. Big D's face broke into a big smile. He took the bat, swung three practice swings, and stepped into the batter's box. Bobby gave Kate and Mike a thumbs-up sign. The athletics pitcher threw the ball low and inside. Pow! The ball blasted off the end of Big D's bat. It lifted up over the shortstop's head. It flew high over the left fielder's head, and it sailed far over the green monster. A grand slam for Big D. One runner after another scored as Big D circled the bases. He stopped just before home plate and then jumped on it with both his feet, and the entire team crowded around him. They gave him high fives and slapped him on the back. Boston was winning for the first time in the game. Big D tipped his hat once to the crowd. He picked up the bat he had borrowed from Nathan, and with a wide smile, he held the bat up in the air and gave it a big kiss. Chapter 9, The MVPs Kate and Mike stood against the infield railing near the, near the Red Sox dugout and watched Fenway Park empty out. Wow, what an amazing game, Kate said. We got to sit right next to the Red Sox dugout and we got to see them win. Big D's grand slam was great, said Mike. I can't believe the new bat had worked. Where do you think Bobby went, asked Kate. He said he'd come back to talk to us after the game. Hey, there's my mom. You two have been busy, Kate's mother said. And she was walking down the aisle with a computer bag slung over her shoulder. A man and woman dressed in dark blue security uniforms were with her. I hear you kids are heroes, said the first security guard. My name is Dennis and this is Tasha. We're in charge of security, security at the stadium. We just finished interviewing the photographer and the sales lady at the souvenir stand, Tasha said. The sales lady didn't have anything to do with it. The photographer simply made friends with her and decided to hide the bat in the store. 
He was worried we might search his equipment. We're lucky you were paying attention, said Dennis. Otherwise, the photographer was going to was going to go back in the souvenir stand, buy the bat, and leave. A private collector offered him lots of money for it. How did he get the bat from the field to the souvenir shop without anyone seeing it? asked Mrs. Hopkins. The photographer had an empty tripod case, Dennis said. When everyone was watching Big D help Wally, he slipped the bat into the case. Then he brought it to the souvenir shop the first chance he had. He knew they'd search the photographer's area and, and his equipment. He dropped out the tripod case in the press room to give him a reason to leave the field, said Tasha. He found the stolen bat in the poster tube where you kids put it. Thank you. And now I think Bobby has a surprise for you. Kate and Mike turned back toward the field. Hi, guys, said Bobby. He was standing next to the Red Sox dugout. I got a special permission for you to visit the dugout. Wowee, said Mike. They usually don't let anyone in a dugout after a game. Bobby opened a small gate, and Kate and Mike stepped down onto the crunchy red infield dirt. Kate's mother and the two security officers followed. The field looks so much bigger when you're down here, Kate said. I can't imagine hitting a home run all the way over that big wall. Kate was right. The field did seem bigger. Mike couldn't believe he was walking on the same grass that the Red Sox played on. It was like a dream come true. Bobby led the group into the Red Sox dugout. Used paper cups used paper cups were strewn all over the floor, and empty water bottles were stacked high in a recycling bin in the corner. Mike and Kate watched the grounds crew clean up. They didn't notice that someone else had joined them in the dugout. How do you like the view? asked a voice. It was Big D. Mike's jaw dropped open. Kate stared up at Big D's huge shoulders and wide smile. I hear you kids did something pretty special for me, Big D said. That's why the Boston Red Sox wanted to do something special for you. Both of you. He pulled his right hand from behind his back, held out a baseball, and dropped it into Mike's hand. It was a brand new Major League Baseball. It looked just like any other Major League Baseball except for one thing. Mike's eyes grew wide. Hey, this is autographed by all the Red Sox players, he said. Thanks, Big D. Big D nodded. You're welcome. It's nice to have my bat back, he said. Now I have something for you as well, young lady. He brought his left hand from behind his back. And it was Big D's green monster bat. I'm afraid that I can't give you the real one, said Big D, but this one is just like it. Kate lifted the bat from Big D's outstretched hands. Mike leaned closer and watched her twirl the bat around. There was a message from Big D written in black marker along the barrel of the bat, saying, My two favorite MVPs, Mike and Kate. Next time I hit a home run, it's for you, Big D.